Okay, this video is looking at DNA sequencing. In order to find out the sequence of a section of DNA, first of all you need to set up four test tubes. Each test tube needs to have several single strands of the DNA which it is that you're trying to sequence. You can see that here, represented in the black line. Several free-floating DNA nucleotides of each type, A, T, C and G. You can see those represented in little black T's. Each tube will have one terminator nucleotide. This is a nucleotide which will attach to the DNA strand and prevent any further nucleotides from attaching. So you can see in this tube we have a terminator A nucleotide. That means that it terminates at the A nucleotide, not that it is an A nucleotide. It would be complementary to an A nucleotide. So it will attach to the A nucleotide and prevent any further nucleotides from attaching. This tube we have a T, a C and a G. It's important to note that only one type of each terminator nucleotide is present in each of the four test tubes. We will then need primer, which is radioactively labelled. You can see that represented by the black circle. And as well as that, the DNA polymerase. The primer helps the DNA polymerase to do its job, which is essentially adding on the free-floating complementary nucleotides. So once we've got all those things set up in a test tube, well, what will happen? Within each test tube, the primer will attach, the DNA polymerase will cause the free-floating nucleotides to attach onto the complementary base on the DNA fragment. Now because it's random as to which nucleotide will attach, there's an equal chance that a normal nucleotide will attach at its complementary base or that a terminator nucleotide will attach at its complementary base. So if let's say I'm trying to sequence this fragment of DNA, we will only see a fragment one nucleotide long in this test tube because it is only in this test tube that we have the A terminator nucleotides. So we will have, as I say randomly, an A terminator nucleotide attached, because that's our first one. That will not happen in any of the other tubes because there are no A terminator nucleotides. So we will only see a fragment which is one nucleotide long in the A tube. Similarly, in the T tube, we will only see a DNA fragment which is two base nucleotides long. Because a normal A would have attached, remember in this test tube we've got free floating DNA nucleotides. And then, sooner or later, one of the T terminator nucleotides will attach, and that's when no more nucleotides will be able to join. So we'll see fragments of varying lengths in each of these test tubes. Now it's true also to note that there will be fragments in there which go for the whole DNA sequence with no terminator nucleotides attaching. And that's okay as well, we're not interested in those, we're only interested in the fragments of different lengths where the terminator nucleotides are attached. So how can we use these different size fragments to sequence the DNA? Well that brings us to the next step, which is looking at gel electrophoresis. We can separate out the fragments from each of the four test tubes. And we see an electrophoresis plate here. You need to note that the smallest fragments will travel furthest. The smallest fragment will only be one nucleotide long, obviously. This will be an A terminator fragment. Remember our code, ATCGTC, well, you will only get a fragment which is one nucleotide long in the test tube with the A terminator. So that will travel furthest. There. This will correspond with the first base in the sequence of DNA that we're trying to sequence. Similarly, test tube with the T terminator nucleotide in it will contain the fragment which is the second long, longest. It will be a normal A nucleotide followed by a T terminator nucleotide. So that will be there. And again, this will correspond to the second base on the DNA fragment that I'm trying to sequence. 
and this process will just continue. So the C will give me a fra C tube will give me a fragment which is three nucleotides long, followed by a G, another T, and another C. Now remember, each of these fragments has been radioactively labelled with the primer, so I'll be able to identify them. And you can see from this that I'll be able to sequence my DNA fragment. First nucleotide A, second T, third C, fourth G, another T, and then a C on the end. And it's in doing this, and using these terminated nucleotides, that we're able to sequence the DNA fragments.